All right, cat update before we get rolling with today's video. Both cats are fine. Uh, we're a handful of vet visits later, probably from what I initially posted. Um, it was one of those things. We're not entirely sure uh, what was up with Poe. Uh, we suspect it might have been a viral infection or something, but everything is good, other than my wallet is a little bit on fire. Um, let's play some magic. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben you here for another legacy video and today we're going to be playing with an unusual blue-white control deck list courtesy of Thomas. This is a slightly edited version of what Thomas originally submitted. The general idea is to combine land tax with scroll rack for a uh, air quotes combo. So Lantax says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you can search your library for up to three basic land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, and shuffle. So the classic idea with this is to get a bunch of basics to hand and either brainstorm or scroll rack them away. Now, in order for scroll rack to be worth playing, because it is not a good card, just objectively speaking, we need more than land tax to just make it work. Now, fortunately for us, there are other cards in the Legacy that don't mind being on the top of your library. We are going to be kind of a miracle-centric deck list with Triumph of St. Catherine, Terminus, and for the boomers out there, even an Entreat, the Angels. Now, since this came up on an Eternal Glory episode recently, I want to take a minute to talk about opportunity cost here. If you like what you hear in the next minute, there's an hour-long version on the Eternal Glory podcast for the episode that came out last week. So, when we talk about opportunity cost, you know, it's what are you giving up in order to do what you're doing? And in order to play land tax and scroll rack, at a minimum, that is a five-card package. If you want to try to make land tax into a reasonable card that is actually going to trigger... You also need to do something to kind of make it so that maybe you don't have to play some land drop sometimes so that you can actually get it to trigger. Well, now we're up to nine cards in the deck. And in order to make scroll rack good, we probably need to put some number of these things in here. Now, let's assume that a couple of these make it into the deck anyway. You know, maybe this is what's reasonable to actually play in a control deck. And then maybe you want to do something else cute with the scroll rack. So this is 12 of our cards are being dedicated to this package. And the rest of this is like reasonable control deck stuff. But each one of these slots could be another land, could be a mystic sanctuary, could be prismatic ending, could be more copies of Teferi, could be a supreme verdict, could be flusterstorm, could be the force of wills that are in the sideboard rather than the main deck. The opportunity cost of doing what we're doing here is very high. And Thomas, I'm going to give it a good old college try, but I'm definitely worried that we're going to feel like we don't have enough controlling elements and that we're, we're just going to be a little bit clunky. So the biggest thing that we're looking out to do out of the sideboard is patch up the matchup versus the unfair stuff. So like the vast majority of this sideboard is fighting against unfair stuff. Since we don't have our generic like Force of Wills, Fluster Storms, Force of Negations in game one that a control deck normally might have. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the matches here. And folks, if you find that you need some cards, please consider checking out toamagic.com and using promo thr promo throde? Promo code THRAVENU to save 5% on your order. And if you are going to be at SCG Con Atlanta, Command Fest LA, or Command Fest Dallas this month, you can place an order online and pick it up on site, which is super convenient. Let's battle. Hey, Phil from the future here. If you want to see this deck kind of do its thing in the way the donor intended, round three is my recommended round if you're short on time. Enjoy the show. So, I could keep this hand. And I could just like play a land tax and intentionally miss land drop too to try to trigger land, land tax and do cute things. But I think that's just worse than mulliganing. Uh, yeah, this is a perfectly reasonable hand. I think I'll just bin. Hmm. Maybe I bin this. 
I don't think I'm casting a turn one ponder. I don't exactly know what I want yet. This is a control mirror. I don't know that I feel good about that. Okay, less likely to be a control mirror. I am going to brainstorm because brainstorm is the card that I would name blind. I'll put back Lorien revealed and redraw ponder. If I were the opponent, I don't think I would name brainstorm again. I'd probably just name something generic like force of will. All right, they named ponder. Yep. Perfectly reasonable. I'm going to go ahead and cast this brainstorm. Ooh, am I fine with miracling a triumph next turn? If I do, I'm not pondering or Lorien revealing this turn. I think I want to play Narset next turn. I think let's go bam, bam, do this, pass. Feels like Cephal at breakfast. I guess Bowmasters is a thing, so I guess I'm not casting that Brainstorm end of turn kind of like I was anticipating doing. Let's floop this Narset into play. I don't think I am going to minus it. Oh, cool. Bowmasters didn't happen. I didn't want this to get pinged and then attacked and just lose the Narset immediately. I wanted to shut off cantrips. Sure. Reveal. Cast. We're in play. Let's dig. I don't have Force of Will, so I'm really looking for like Swords to Plowshares to disrupt the combo. Um, that is happening. Not having Force of Will to protect that is rough. Oh, Back to Basics is a pseudo win condition. I have to reveal that, though. It's better than the other stuff. Let's Island Cycle here. I'll just grab the basic. And I will ponder. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No shuffle. I, 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 I hate not having access to force of will i'm so scared uh, that's fine Ooh, seems like we're getting lucky here my opponent might have a fistful of cantrips that they can't do a lot with so i will cast this uh i'll take a swords swords is very good so i am i am going to blow a little bit of my clock sitting here thinking like I have force of will and whether or not I want to use it because I want my opponent to think that I have more interaction than I actually do and then I'm going to let it resolve I am fine with another land here I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle immediately and pass the turn all right we are playing more draw go I'm so afraid of bowmasters but I think I have to keep casting spells. Uh, land tax does nothing. I'm going to put back land tax. Tundra. I'm going to island cycle this card to just shuffle. Teferi. Teferi is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and do that in this turn cycle. So my opponent has something that they can do. What's the slowdown? It might be like a force of will that pitches a cephalid illusionist or something like that. Or you now they've probably got cantrip stuck in hand. Like my read is that my opponent has some number of combo pieces that they're not willing to play out into white removal. Some amount of cantrips that are stuck in hand. And some valid counterspell. Alright, my Teferi is in play. I don't think I back to basics my opponent right now. Plusing this just means Prismatic Ending is live, and that it's relatively hard for me to just randomly die. And then on my next turn, I can just resolve a Back to Basics while holding up two pieces of interaction. I, I guess I don't actually have two up right now. Ouchie. <laughs> my opponent gave us the oof in chat and is conceding. Um, that was a that was a weird game. I don't. I don't feel like I should have won, but I did. So my opponent has a lot of non-basics, including probably Urza's Saga. So this is, I guess, a thing. My opponent can win on two lands, meaning that like land tax is bad. Just full, full stop, we can't. Which means that this is also bad. Which means that this gets worse, and these are also sketch. 
Uh, then there's the matter of things like Terminus, which aren't exactly like the bee's knees either. I want these Force of Wills back. I think that matters. I think I care about Surgical. I go down a Terminus. I think I want this back to basics. As weird as it is to play all four of those. I think that's a big part of my game. I am perfectly fine with this hand. But Tundra is probably the card that I like the least in the hand since I am looking at back to basics. But I am expecting back to basics to be Force of Will fodder. And I'll find another one at some point. Wall Therapy resolves. They did name Force. So before a Bowmaster can come down, I think I am just going to ponder. Love to find spot removal. Triumph. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle. I want Swords to Plowshares very badly right now. My opponent can do some cantripping of their own. All right, there is a basic. I'm just going to play a basic and pass. There's some merit to main phase brainstorming. I think I want to have swords available through days for my opponent's turn because they can just, in theory, go land drop win. Now they can't. I think I'm just going to brainstorm in response to their brainstorm. Oh, holy hell. Well, I guess I'll put back Terminus Terminus. All right, there is a Lorien Revealed Cycle as a follow-up. Or a basic. Um... So my next card down is a Terminus, which I do not want. If I tap out for Teferi, sometimes I just die because I don't have Swords to Plowshares available. So I think I'm just chilling. Oh, that's fine. Now that my opponent has a fourth land, this would be the first time I believe in the entire league that a land tax would be capable of triggering. Profane Tutor is suspended. Absolutely. Uh, that makes my Teferi look really effing good. I'm very happy with that. So, oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? I need to play another white. Uh, okay, since I messed up, I'm playing back to basics instead of Teferi. Um, but it was my intention to play Teferi this turn. I guess back to basics is bait now. But I was supposed to play Teferi because like, it stops the Profane Tutor and also makes it so that Force of Will and friends can't just back up the full combo. Um, that was a very large mistake on my end. Fracture? Sure. Yeah, we've got a bunch of those in deck, so that's okay. Not that I can actually do anything about it anyway. It'll be kind of funny if I eat Cabal Therapy this turn for not playing out to Fairy. Okay, seems like I am going to get to untap. Ponder's fine. I'm never drawing a fetch land with Ponder, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Let's Teferi. That's good enough to get a response. The response is like presumably hard cast Force of Will. All right, Lorien Revealed is going on top, which is annoying. That is hard cast Force of Will. I'll ponder. Oh, I have a plan to win this game now. It requires me randomly not dying to combo, but I have a plan to win. Uh, this Profane Tutor is scary. So I did not succeed at stopping that. So my opponent tanked on their choice. Oh, actually, so if they Profane Tutored, they didn't draw Lorien Revealed. Force of Plowshares is a great name here. Force of Will is a great name here. All right, they named Force of Will. Oh, fuck. Uh... I was not prepared for this. Okay, so my opponent has priority in a way that I can't mess with. So they are actually a, an Academy Rector deck rather than uh, Cephalid Breakfast. Well, this explains why my opponent was farting around for so long between these two games. I've lost Terminus. So there's Lorien Revealed. Okay, lands are good. Uh, although I guess that could be another Mystic Sanctuary to Lorien revealed again. Uh, I will reveal this. It is, as they say, a miracle. So then, go ahead and attempt back to basics to keep this stuff tapped. Uh, it matters a lot less right now. But there's 
relatively little cost for me to play this in case I do find a way to bounce the omniscience out of play later. Like, I know I, that I am drawing triumph into triumph. All right, there's another basic. Oh my gosh, a miracle. And this card is not legendary, despite, like, definitely feeling like a legend conceptually to me. That is a force of will. You got it. Send it. 12. How, how big is the thing that my opponent can find over there? Like, are we talking Emrakul big? We are talking Emrakul big. Sure. Protection from spells that are one or more colors. Confirmed good. So Annihilator 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Did I board out a Terminus? I boarded out. So there's literally one Terminus. I probably don't want to shuffle Triumph back in. <clears throat> Let's get rid of a planes. Maybe I have to. I think I need to keep a land of each color. All right, I take 15. Uh, and we whiff. All right, so I don't know what's going on over there. So Lavinia actually, I think, is somewhat reasonable. It's good against their Force of Wills. It's good against their Flashback Cabal Therapies. And good against Omniscience, mostly. Terminus is my out to an emrakul sized threat. There are presumably like Bowmasters and stuff over there that I just haven't seen. I think I'm going to go in and treat out and a back to basics out for these. Not sure how I feel about this. Like opponent's combo, but some of the stuff that I need to counter isn't actually countered by force of negation. I'll say that this is fine. Ah, uh, sounds pretty bad. I, I think this is awkward enough that even Brainstorm doesn't save it. This hand is very good. I keep this, get rid of a Swords to Plowshares or a Surgical Extraction. I'm going to get rid of Surgical. Uh, so let's play this and pass. Like The plan is just this into this. Uh, that's fantastic. Second Swords is not what I want to see. Grab a basic and just slam Lavinia. Uh, this is very strong if it resolves. Nice. All right, that is a basic. Uh, please don't name my swords. They named Force of Will. Uh, yeah, your cantrip is fine. That's happening. I shouldn't expect that Lavinia is just here forever. Ooh, no land drop is very good for me. Oh, yeah. Two. And then we'll slam back to basics. My opponent's uh, Force of Will style effects don't get to counter that because of Lavinia. So we're in the clear in the short to medium term. Eh, yeah, okay. Whatever. Let's miracle a triumph of St. Catherine and end this game. Strunk. Uh, Teferi is cool. Yaw. I may draw a card with this next turn. I'm just going to plus for now and keep the loyalty high. Like Teferi at this loyalty so I can just bounce stuff is really good. Wrong miracle. Um, I'm going to plus one more time, and then I'm comfortable drawing a card next turn once I still can leave this at higher loyalty. <laughs> the price of progress. They like their next draw. Um, let's draw a card. This is up to one target, so I don't have to choose a target. I can just draw a card here. Beautiful. So now I'll swing in. I have force of will for something scary that happens. I imagine my opponent's top card was just a land. That feels like about the only thing that they would uh, keep on top at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully I just pick my opponent to death with Lavinia here. Okay. So my opponent now has mana. And I just need to not counter the wrong thing. Rector's kind of the big one right now. Even though Lavinia can counter the flashback Cabal Therapy, that does not stop the creature from being sacrificed. We also have timeout as a very real win condition. Well, okay. That's a use it now or lose it. I don't have a surveil land, right? Because I'm back to basics, yeah. Um, I have nothing right now. I think I'm going to draw a card. I think I'm going to draw a card. Uh. <laughs> All right. 
Not feeling good. This is the fourth mana for the Rector. All right, let's see what my opponent's got going on. Yep, that is the Rector. I cannot stop that. The Force of Will was meant to do this, but, you know, the Fairy was going to stop this anyway. So I get to counter the Cabal Therapy, but I don't get to stop whatever this is. Omniscience into Emrakul is very good. Omniscience into anything else is terrible. Yep, that does not do what you want to do. My opponent probably just punted this game by not waiting a turn to just source the plowshares this with the planes. Uh, we take those. Surgical extraction on source the plowshares now? Uh, seems pretty reasonable. And I can do this safely in the draw step because my opponent can only cast spells when they can cast a sorcery. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Go send it. Opponent set four. I let them draw. Draw step surgical swords. They either drew that Emrakul or they had it last turn and didn't realize that it was uncounterable. Can't be countered. Okay, so I have plus the Teferi. I can Terminus at instant speed. All right, so my opponent Cunning Wishes. That's okay. There's a source of Plowshares now. Yeah, unfortunate. Sure. Yes. My opponent should Grief here. So now I don't get to take out the Emrakul. I can still Terminus away this Grief. My opponent gets an extra turn with an Emrakul. And they will presumably not time out in making two Emrakul attacks. So I know that my opponent has Fluster Storm. To beat Emrakul, I need to Terminus. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think my opponent is supposed to kill Teferi so that their Fluster Storm is live. Um, but none of that mattered. I felt like my opponent make a, made a lot of uh, very bad mistakes there, but we could not capitalize on them. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Uh, this is uh, this is a nope from me. Uh, this is fine. A terminus can go back. I am going to cast a ponder. Oh, that's pretty ideal. I wanted a triumph that was all the way down. So let's go. Bam, bam, bam. No shuffle. So the hope is that we are not playing against combo here. Remove that. Stop. I don't need it right now. Oh, please don't be Black Red Reanimator. Uh-huh. <sighs> Fire of Insanity. A card my opponent probably shouldn't be playing, but it is going to win them the game here. It is specifically going to win them the game because I didn't leave planes on top. If I leave planes on top and I just, like, Miracle Triumph two turns from now, I just win the game. But I hid Scroll Rack from random interaction. And I lose for it. That is frustrating. And this is like the cost of not having things like Force of Will in your main deck. Um, these are great. Lavinia is okay. Surgical is great. Hydroblast is maybe playable. But like against this deck, the land tax stuff sucks. The back to basics aren't great either. Um, these probably come out first. Again, my opponent won the game on one land. This is not viable. Prismatic ending is not particularly strong. I have so few win conditions in this deck that I might need Entreat. I'm going to play a Lavinia over Entreat. I just don't have time to set that up. That gives me a few more win conditions. I'm going to call this good. It's probably a bit heavier on the spot removal than I would like to be. Uh, Mox Diamond looking great. <laughs> Yikes, uh, Mulligan. Mox Diamond looking great. Uh, I guess I keep this one. I guess I put the Terminus back in the deck. 
So, do that, do that, island cycle that. Um, I'm just going to confirm all my back to basics are out, right? All my back to basics are out. So I can get Tundra, play Tundra, Ponder. Um, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No shuffle. Yes. That does not get Force of Negation. So we may end up in a spot where my interaction does not end up being relevant. Oh, great. That's going to be an Iona on white that effectively wins my opponent game the game on the spot because I can't... Oh, never mind. Now I can just draw a source of plowshares or terminus and win the game. Thank you, opponent. I appreciate your kindness. Since my count trips are off anyway, I might just fetch to thin a land out of my deck. If memory serves, there is currently... Or no, I've shuffled already. Uh, fetching the thin normally does not apply to blue decks. But we're in sort of unusual territory here. Um, but I do have to draw a white card that kills my opponent's thing. And it has to be my next draw step. I'll take seven. Come on, white card. Yeah, you, you got it. I don't need to ferry. I unfortunately miss on my draws, and I am dead. GG's. All right. All right. I'm going to intentionally miss a land drop in hopes of triggering land tax and getting a uh, card advantage. We'll see if it works. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to set an upkeep stop on my turn. Actually, I don't need it yet. All right. Yes. Planes. Island. I'll do a plane since I have Lorien revealed for cycling here. Make a land drop and pass. If my opponent makes a land drop, I get to trigger land tax again. Nice. Don't bow master me. Uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and put back land, land. This is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have the scroll rack. So I've got that going for me. Am I even playing that? I think I'm playing that. All right, it's in play. So I can exchange these lands for something else and then shuffle. Uh, your brainstorm's fine. I'm hoping my opponent finds a surveil land. And then we start working towards this. Back to basics is just like not going to be particularly strong card here. Junk a couple things. Yeah, that's fine. My opponent may intentionally miss a land drop this turn. Or they might just like make their land drops and say like, fuck it, whatever, you can land tax. Like, what are you going to do? Sure. I think just for the sake of using my mana, I'm going to do this at end of turn. Let's put back land, land. I'll just redraw them. Sure. Great. Let's hold on to this back to basics for a little while longer. I think I am going to go ahead and cast a counterbalance here. I could fish for a Mox Diamond right now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I'll just discard a couple cards though. Discard Tundra Island. My opponent's not doing anything for me to interact with, so I'm discarding way more cards than I normally would. I'm talking about the text here. This is not a draw. So it gets around things like Bowmasters. I, 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 I respond to that. Uh, let's just do my like entire hand, except maybe a Swords to Plowshares. Um, I did not find any... All oh, right, I don't fucking have Force of Will in my deck. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. Um, sure. The order here doesn't matter too much. I'm going to scroll rack away all this shit. So, like, yaw, 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 yaw. I'll reveal a one to counter that. Then we'll see what my opponent does. Urza Saga. We got back to basics for that. Don't have a way to draw a card. So that's just resolving. And now my opponent can undo some amount of my actual work here. 
Oh no, they're just plussing. Sure. One, two, three, four. Oh, I do have three. So I have a prismatic ending on top of my deck that I could get back. So one mana, activate scroll rack, three mana, prismatic ending. That leaves me with one mana afterwards. Teferi's my top card. How many cards down is that other thing that I want? I don't remember. But the cards in my hand kind of suck, so let's just refresh. I am always shuffling this shit with land tax. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With eight per card for turn. Down to seven, down to six. I can take two of these. Okay. So the next question is, which thing am I doing? Like, do I just back to basics first and make Urza Saga a non-issue? Sure. Uh, let's try that. Days. I will randomly do the counterbalance. I reveal Narset. Play the one. All right, we're in play. My opponent bounced their Tundra. I discard this. This can represent a Pithing Needle. I am going to have six mana on my turn. I probably don't get to... We've got a Narset on top. Oh no. I probably don't ever get to land tax again now that my opponent has dazed. Daze, uh, very, very good against land tax. Also, I've just like discarded a bunch of lands and pulled a bunch out of my deck. So conceptually, I probably want to play a Teferi on my turn and then play either a Prismatic Ending or a Narset afterwards. My opponent's disappearing. Urza Saga also just makes the land tax kind of rough. Ooh, there's more. I like ending my land tax. Ending on my Mox Diamond is like very good right here because it keeps me from Prismatic Ending on X equals 3 for that Teferi. That might not be apparent to my opponent from a distance. So one, two, three. Cool. Prismatic ending to fairy. One, two, some other color. Three. Do I just bounce the Urza saga and not let my opponent tutor for potentially something like Shuko? That could be a big deal. That sounds good. It gives them another mana. Hopefully that doesn't matter. But I've I've got a I've got a squad of permanents that are not killing my opponent. That is a Cephalid Illusionist. I will counterbalance trigger. I have a Mox Diamond. Sure. Uh yep, I am going to die through all of these permanents. Well that sucks. Alright, a handful of clicks later, my opponent is casting a dread return on a Thassa's Oracle, and they win the game. So this is a great example of like executing the combo that this deck is built around and it just like not actually being good. If my opponent doesn't put things into play that I can interact with, then like I'm not having cards exit my hand and I'm just kind of like derping around and discarding. Yup. <laughs> All right. Um, surgical's fine. Lavinia can stop the combo. Um, back to basics is probably still good. Like, I, I do have to respect Urza's Saga. I probably need Force of Will. My opponent knows about land tax now and also has days in their deck. That is not a recipe for this sort of stuff to be good. What am I doing from here? I can go down some copies of Terminus. Still need Source of Plowshares to break up the combo, and I think I still want Force of Will. And treat Back to Basics as my primary win con. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I need this to get to the three drop the turn earlier. I go down this and treat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Sure. So let's attempt to set up for turn two Narset. I guess I could have brainstormed and then fetched. And still just kind of do this, throw the Terminus 2 down and shuffle it away. Yeah. Yeah. Grab a basic. Shove Narset a turn early. I don't know if I force if my opponent does something like Daze here. I'll force a force, though. I, I think that's fine. All right. Um, this is the good card. This is the thing that stops me from dying 
to the combo. I think I'm just going to take the good card. Like, there's a decent amount of time where my opponent just, like, drops an Urza Saga, and I need to respect that. Oh, okay. No, we definitely needed this uh, Ponder. Back to Basics and Swords to Plowshares would be cool. Uh, back to Basics. That'll do. I think I just play Back to Basics right now and don't Ponder. Like, if this Back to Basics resolves, these aren't lands, yeah. And, like, I can lose the Narset to a Stoneforge Mystic attack, but, you know, I, I think we're okay. And then I can, like, try to ponder for something that actually starts winning me the game. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, cast a Triumph. Cast a Ponder. Yes, to Narset. I guess I'll take a Lorien Revealed as well. I'm going to go ahead and make this land drop anyway. Like, it's awkward that I have two non-basics in the deck and I've drawn them both, but my opponent is a daze deck, and I think I'm just going to respect what they are capable of. Is this a land? Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Just immediately start looking. Of course it will into my hand. I think I'm going to defend the Narset for a turn until I get another card out of it. Lorien Reveal being a blue card, just super relevant right now. Oh, hey. Uh, let's do this again. Swords. We're fine just swordsing this. And now we just kind of work on murdering our opponent. I think one of these is a land drop. Let's just pick up another island. The other one I'll save to pitch to Force of Will until I'm at the point where I can just hard cast it. For sure. Sure. Well, I care about that. Awkward. Do I care enough to force of will that? It's awkward because just like Island Cephalid Illusionist is a problem. Maybe I just don't care. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead, just hit, and assume that Lorien Revealed will draw me a blue card and just use this mana. Let's go ahead and draw three. Ah, wonderful. So my opponent doesn't get to untap these lands this turn. I lose Mox Diamond. I can slam another back to basics if my opponent doesn't present something that I feel like I need to counter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I don't really want to counter this spell, but like my opponent has Cauldra. There's another tutor for potentially half of their combo. I just kill them in one more attack step. All right, I'll counter. I whiff on my draw. See if I die to the full combo just being in hand. I have no interaction. Oh, maybe I let it resolve and then just play back to basics. All right, we got lucky. Opponent has Serenity making some of the counterbalance and scroll rack stuff and land tech stuff that I've already boarded out worse. I still think I'm playing back to basics. I think that's how I'm going to steal a lot of games. I might need another Lorien Revealed. I'm going to board out a Mox Diamond on the draw. I don't get under my opponent and, like, play the preemptive Narset and Teferi when I'm on the draw. I'm not throwing this back. I'm not, like, the most excited about it, but I have respectable tools. Sure. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we're just going to go land drop and pass. I don't want my opponent to play an Urza Saga this turn. We dodged that. That is an illusionist that I will attempt to swords to plowshares. Let's let that resolve. All right. Swords, your thing. Uh, that is a force of will on my swords to plowshares. I can attempt to, like, surgical my way out of this, but I think I just want to try to not. It's like sometimes... Ooh, I could Surgical Urza Saga now. Is that a thing that I want to do? Like, I'm always doing this. Do I want to just take out the best thing that is fair? That is... Like, I'll, I'll probably lose to a fair Urza Saga right now. I can keep this to try to be good against the combo side, but, like, this is already stopping, like, the Dread Return at the end. So I think I'm going to just Surgical Urza Saga... I'm going to do it now before my opponent draws another card. Fuck, they have another Cephalid Illusionist. Tilt. All right. 
So it's actually the Stoneforge Mystic that's scarier right now. Okay. Cool. So Cephalid Illusionist, Stoneforge Mystic, one unknown card. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. 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 No shuffle. Land drop. Attack two. 18. Cool. Miracle Triumph. It resolves. Play land drop. What's my next card down? I think a land. So that's white mana, but it's tapped white mana. My opponent junks a land. Do I care about this? The Stoneforge for Cauldra is a bigger deal. I think either way I'm willing to take a draw before deciding. That's a weird one. My opponent didn't equip Shuko, which is good because that means this isn't threatening to trade. I think this is for the Stoneforge. It's a little awkward. Yes. So that allows my opponent to do the thing at instant speed as opposed to Shuko, which does the thing at sorcery speed. Now I probably fire off a removal spell here just out of fear of things getting worse in the future. I think I'm keeping this to be a blue card. Yes. Hey. Although I guess if I cycle it, then I have the land drop and can still hardcast Force of Will, but this plays around like days and stuff. My opponent's got a few turns worth of blockers. Send this in. Goodbye. Last turn. I think I counter that. I think that card's spooky. Sure. Oh, that's real good. I'm going to see what my opponent does with blocks here before I go any further. Fantastic. Now, we'll nurse it. I can dig for a piece of spot removal. Uh, well, Surgical Extraction is the best of these. I will take that. I don't think I cast it immediately. I could cast it on Stoneforge. That doesn't feel super relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My opponent puts a card on top. I might want to cast this just to shuffle their library then. Yeah, let's do this to shuffle their library. Take out their Narc Amoebas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So this does not actually combo off here without the Narc Amoebas in the deck. And there's also like this Dread Return problem. And Calder's their last card. Or no, I guess they have four for Dread Return, but they don't have Narc Amoeba. Ball Therapy resolves. Oh, wait, it doesn't. Lavinia. Okay, that was my opponent's way of just conceding. Um, well, we've stumbled our way onto a win, but I don't really feel uh, good about it. All right. Am I supposed to keep this hand? I have Scroll Rack to help set up a Triumph. I have a Ponder. I have Back to Basics, which maybe chooses a win. Like, I just... I, I don't feel good about this deck. I think we're probably going to be starting this game from behind. The good news is, if I ponder and find a Swords of Plowshares, I can just remove this before it ever gets to activate. At least in theory, unless that's a crop rotation. Okay. Alright. Island. Ponder. I need the extra land drops, but all like none of these cards do anything. And Back to Basics doesn't look great versus my opponent's Forest and Active Elvish Reclaimer. I think I am shuffling, trying to spike the swords to plowshares, which I do not get. I don't think I play Mox Diamond. I think I hope to scroll rack that back. Ugh. Yeah. Thank you, Mox Diamond. Thank you for your service. Oh, uh, okay. Brainstorm. I was going to die to a 2020. I can set up a Triumph, but, like, I need a swords to plowshares or I'm going to die to a 2020. I think we're doing something like, yeah... Yeah. Yeah. Batch. Planes. Mox Diamond. Discard Tundra. Scroll Rack. And then I can scroll rack a large number of cards. Digging for Swords to Plowshares next turn. If my opponent just goes for Urza's Saga, I can back to basics. And that's okay. Eh, fuck. So there is a 2020 in my future. 
I would like to ponder for second swords to plowshares. Holy fuck. Yes. Yeah. 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 No shuffle. I think just pass turn. Yes. Now, so that my opponent can't just untap this and do this with protection, I swords this. And then they're going to fetch make their 2020 and all swords that. Oh no, they're not going for it immediately. Sure. That's okay. Like, this is fine. Reclaimer, you got it. Uh, no, don't do more things. I had the current things just about under control. Oh, sure. All this stuff works through back to basics. Land, Mox Diamond, question mark, are my cards. I think I'm just letting all of this stuff go. Drawing my land. Playing back to basics. So now my opponent can make a 2020, but not make a 2020 and protect it. All right, I guess there's... Sorry, Thespian stage is tapped. This is not so bad. Yeah, I'm going to take this hit. 15. So Mox Diamond is my next card. I want to play Teferi. Maybe I just want to scroll rack. I can Teferi bounce this. Then I am in trouble versus some top decks. Let's change those two. One and two. Now I'll fetch. Yaw. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do this for tempo. Endurance. Sure. So I want to exile this Elvish Reclaimer so that nothing gets its ability later. There's also bouncing this, but I think I'm just going to take the tempo-oriented line. I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove this now. Like I know that I want that answered forever. Yeah, that's fine. Having a very weird day temperature-wise, where it's currently warm enough that I have my window open, but there's also a freeze warning for tonight. It's April 6th. I'm on spring break. What a strange world. Let's try to naturally dig here with Narset first before scroll racking. Ooh. Uh, I'll take the swords. Swords clears the board. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to make a land drop. And I'll scroll rack this land at end of turn. Once I have a little more information about what I care about. I need to work towards... Finding my last swords or finding a triumph or something. Uh, yeah. I don't have force of negation, so that's happening. End of turn, scroll rack. Mox Diamond is worse. Grab an island. Nope. So, Teferi plus. Narset minus. Uh, that's fine. I think I will do this now. Let's get new cards. So Mox Diamond on bottom, then Terminus, then Entreat. S second back to basics doesn't do a ton. I'm going to play it out anyway, as I don't want to get Bosejud and then killed. I'm going to play a second scroll rack so that if I need to Terminus. No, I guess I already could have Terminus. Because scroll racking in my upkeep would not be drawing a card. So I really just want to get better against the creatures, but I'm not actually the best at doing that. I don't really get to sideboard much here. I have another back to basics that I can play. I could Force of Will or Force of Negation. Like I have four sorts of plowshares and I used three of them that game. Um, I don't think counterbalance is great. That can become a back to basics. I can Force of Negation for Life from the Loam specifically. My Urza Saga plan is kind of just back to basics. I have four. Uh, I think we're doing this. This does not have the initial removal spell that I would like from a hand, but it has an island, a ponder, a white source, and at least a bounce spell. Oh, cool. No immediate turn one creature. Uh, very happy to ponder. Looking for swords to plowshares. Yes. So Triumph will go 
two down here. So the weird thing here is that I can't really swords if I want to triumph. Uh-huh. Fuck. All right. Fair is fair. All right. Remove this stop. I needed this for a specific purpose. So now I have to shuffle for my triumph. Uh, yes. We'll just swords this immediately off of planes and work towards at least bouncing the choke out of play. Fuck. I am I'm debating conceding so my opponent does not see my deck composition. I have one permanent answer to that choke. I can't cast cantrips to get to it. If I Teferi bounce it, my opponent just replays it. I think I am going to concede here rather than let my opponent see my exact deck. Like, losing those swords to plowshares means that I have... <laughs> yeah. Yeah means that I, I think I'm just dead to them. I, I probably need some amount of this stuff in respect of choke. Am I just like not land taxing against my opponent that can actually ramp lands? Awkward. Something like that. Maybe I just go down Mox Diamonds and try to play. Well, keep, I guess. It's kind of fucked up. I don't think I play turn one back to basics. I don't know, maybe I just do. I'm not going to. Sure. <sighs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> that is so incredibly frustrating. So I, because I don't Mox Diamond, I don't get the Miracle Triumph. When it rains, it pours. So I guess I am going to work towards just hard casting that now. Double planes in respect of Choke. Discard an island, play this out. Get savaged by a force of vigor in a minute all right no dredge there's a duder any land lets me play a five five all right yaw yaw five five so i've operated in a way that lets me better play around choke but i'm going to be worse against some other random stuff because of it uh yep uh, it's not great for me. I think my opponent is just going to produce a 2020 through my nonsense very easily. They can double activate this stuff. Neither Royal Quarry can get bigger than my Triumph very easily. Like, block with Knight, sack this. Knight's a 4-4, four, four, get a fetch land. Knight's a 5-5, five, five, rotate that. Knight's a 6-6. Six, six. I can't attack with Triumph anymore. And my removal spells are also presumably not live anymore. Yep. Yeah. So, Plains is now a uh, Savannah forever. And all their stuff can just be rotated away. Not great. Yep. Savannah goes away. And my opponent can just Dark Depths through what I've got going on if they would like. Sure. They're not going for that immediately. They're just going to hold up this as uh, Sajiri forever. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That is quite lucky. I think I still just die, though, right? They get the 2020 after all of this happens. I just have to pass the turn, hope they don't do it, or hope that I draw an answer to it. I am at 23. Yep. I think I am fine with that being surgical. Although it lets my opponent know that the coast is clear and halves my outs to it next turn. Maybe I don't. I don't know. If I respond to this, I can't stop Life from the Loam forever. I think I have to let that go. Otherwise, like, Life from the Loam, Dark Depths, Thespian Stage will slowly just whittle me down. Yeah, 2020 time. So I'm probably dead. I need to draw an out to this, and my opponent needs to not have Corrupt Rotation or Legolas's Quick Reflexes or whatever. Yep, that does not get Force of negation yeah. Uh, yeah, so not having Terminus is rough right now. So let's ponder. I'll take a fresh ponder. Shuffle. I'm at two. I don't know how I beat these on top of Merit Lage. I don't have Supreme Verdict. Uh, last set of looks. Three Swords to Plowshares. It is not three Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, at this point... I have no outs to that. 
GG's. All right, final round here. Uh, this hand doesn't really do anything. Like, I can have two mana on turn one. I don't have a way to put these triumphs back. Uh, this is just a mulligan to five directly. Okay. I'm keeping... I'll put the miracles back in the deck. I desperately am going to need my second color of mana. And it's Mox Diamond. By Mox Diamond, I technically have a second color of mana. That is, I have both colors. I think I'm going to just try to uh, brainstorm away that Mox Diamond at some point. I, I think that's where I'm at. Uh, shuffle. Uh, that's at least a land, kind of. It is a thought seizable land, but it's a land. I'm always island cycling. I think I have to get Tundra, despite having three back to basics in my deck. And despite Wasteland being relevant, I don't think I want to make my land drop be able to be destroyed by Prismatic Ending. Sure. And fetch to clear. Are we doing a control mirror? We're doing a control mirror where I don't get to cantrip anymore. Rough. I think I'm effectively dead if I miss my land drop. Rest down. Sure. I missed my land drop. I think this is the point where I have effectively lost the game, but... The turn counter is going to tick up to 10 before someone dies. All right, force pitching the dress down that I knew about. So opponent is going to bury me alive here. I am likely to concede once I know what deck they are playing, but... Oh, sure. I guess I can put my own Narset into play, and then that makes Jace significantly worse. How strong is my will to keep playing this game? Strong enough. I think once my opponent puts a, cr a creature in, if they're just like confident enough to already be in fate sealing mode and they just fate seal me off of lands, I'm never doing anything. I'm just not going to give them any information. I'm going to, I'm going to call it here. Like, I, I think I am unfortunately just kind of dead to this. Like if I miracle a triumph, it just gets Jace bounced. And that would normally be my way of dealing with that. And then I can't just like easily recast it. So the bad news here is my, I think my entire deck is just bad here. Like all this stuff is incredibly slow and clunky. This is unlikely to do anything versus anything major versus my opponent's blue white control deck list. So like this has power and toughness. I'll bring that in. I don't want to be two for wanting myself with counter spells. Force of negation is acceptable. This game is going to drag on long enough that Mox Diamond probably doesn't matter. Like, this is just card disadvantage, and I don't really want to force of will, but I think I will. Uh, okay. Yeah, like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, this is not a good card right now. So, let's pass the turn. And I imagine we're going to be doing a decent amount of draw go. Oh, nice. I'm actually incredibly happy with that draw. Especially since my opponent may have boarded out some number of swords to plowshares. We'll see. Sure. Uh, yep. I will not use a force of will to protect this Lavinia. That is not meaningful to me. I'll use a force of will to protect Narset. Like, that actually matters. So, let's do this thing. Nice. Uh, land tax doesn't do anything. I have more lands. Uh, I think I'm just going to take a second Narset over a Swords. I'm kind of assuming that my opponent's deck is very creature light if they are opting to play something like Jace. Yeah, uh, Lentax would not have done a lot here. Narset again. I'll take a Force of Negation. Make a land drop. I think just pass. I don't think I need to be just firing off counter spells willy nilly. Ooh, that's very good. So let's throw this in play. And now I can. Hold up hard cast force of negation to protect it. Nice. I don't even have to immediately. We just have a non game in the other direction where I just roll over my opponent with a 5 5 now. I am perfectly fine with that. I might just be casting another triumph here. Like I can have two triumphs with double counter spell protection. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Like that. We'll draw my opponent a card. I, I, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to pass the turn. 
like this probably results in me not using my mana in this turn cycle but i'm not entirely sure that that actually is a thing that matters if i just have this many counter spells send it nine pass all right we are getting some end of turn movement sure a pyroblast i'm gonna nope that i i don't want to unlock my opponent's counter spells or sorry uh rather their cantrips cool like if i think i don't if i think if i don't unlock their cantrips and i just have multiple forces like this is just quite actively good well let's force junking a brainstorm fight again fighting again seems fine and the stack clears so now the question becomes, like, do I cast the second Triumph and lose to literal miracle Supreme Verdict? Or, uh, like, Terminus or land plus Supreme Verdict? I think I do to play around just, like, a source of plowshares or a bounce spell beating, uh, like, slowing me down significantly. So we dodged Miracle Terminus. Yep, we played around that. Solitude. Sure. My opponent still doesn't get to cantrip. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to get another tundra. Uh, another tundra. Two enough? Play around fluster? I think so. Force of will pitching Narset. Sure. So my opponent never gets to fetch. Unless I like Source of Plowshares uh, Triumph. Uh, that is a Miracled Triumph. I'm going to take a draw step to see if I just draw it to Fairy and can bounce that out of play instead of give my opponent life negative. So I do have to Swords it. My opponent somehow has not like drawn a single cantrip all game for Narset. I don't play this. It doesn't do anything. Uh, so let's attempt to send that card away. I have very few win conditions left. Like, two of these triumphs are in exile. Put you back, put you back. I still have a Lavinia I can win with if this dies. Uh, I guess please don't be swords. Alright, not swords. Ponder's great. I'm going to go ahead and hit my opponent to one first. Fantastic. Now we'll do this. If I cast Brainstorm... I don't think that's actually good. Let's just shuffle. Nice. But let's cast this. Perfectly fine just plussing and leaving this in play to bounce like a Miracle Triumph out of play for lethal. Sure. Snapcaster Swords is annoying. That's a very good draw. Can't bounce my Narset. Not going to bounce that Snapcaster Mage. I'm just going to draw a card, see if it changes what I want to do. I can only Prismatic Ending for X equals 2. So I think I just used that to take out Snapcaster. Yeah, I have one Lavinia left to deal that final point of damage to my opponent. My opponent is drawing insane for someone who has not been able to legally cantrip all game. Now I have to do two Lavinia hits. Okay, it's a Lavinia. Um, I am going to just play it out and try to get over the hump here. Like, at some point, my opponent theoretically has to draw some brainstorms and ponders that get stuck in their hand. And hopefully this is that point. Guess I don't do this yet. Got a Snapcaster Mage covered. Opponent's at one. I think I do this. Although maybe I'm supposed to just, like, minus and draw for Force of Will. All right, Cool. I have no more win conditions in my sideboard that I can board in. That's rough. All right. I might need the extra counter spells in place of like land tax here. Like the land tax is better on the draw, but I, I have so few physical win conditions. Like this is one of the costs of like playing all this cute stuff that I'm playing. Like I nearly ran out of win conditions. Like, I was on my last win condition, and if that got swords, I had to concede. So I think I need to better protect these. I don't really want to be Force of Willing, but, like, here we are. This is mana and a Narset. 
I'm not excited about the Force of Will, but I don't think it's worth mulliganing. Um, if my opponent Narsets, it's really hard for me to remove that. It's just a land drop and pass. I don't, I don't want more counter spells right now. Like the counter spells are good once I have a threat or once we're in that mid game. We're not there yet. Also, my opponent gets to like pyroblast, and I don't, which is really huge. Let's grab a basic. I'll play said basic and pass. My opponent is the one who gets to play a three drop planeswalker first, and it's kind of a big deal because if my opponent casts one, I have to respond by using a force force effect and pitching a card, and they could just like force of negation me if I go to play something first. I don't think I'm cycling this. Uh, Hydroblast is cool. I am going to play Drago for another turn. I'll probably cast a Narset with Hydroblast back up next turn. But I don't think I want to cast my 3-drop into my opponent's open mana yet. So like Hydroblast not being Pyroblast is kind of a huge deal for things like Snapcaster Mage. Alright, we continue to play Drago, but my opponent has a castable spell. They were thinking about it. <sighs> I wish I had like a nice flash creature that I could just play. Wait a turn? Question mark? Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to continue to make land drops. Uh, yes. Uh, that is a Triumph, which I currently do not have any reasonable answer to other than Force of Will. I think I am going to Force of Will that and pitch Le the Lavinia. Yeah. don't really want to be doing things like that, though. So now, the Force of Negations can't be used on my own turn to protect Narset until I'm at 6 mana. I think I'm just going to pass... Like, I am hoping that my opponent does something on their turn that lets me use Force of Negation so that I can just try to resolve Narset. But they are not doing that. Uh, yes? Okay, plan has changed. We're going to fetch twice, one planes, one island. My opponent could Force of Will this, but a lot of the Pyroblast style stuff doesn't work on this. I'm okay with this. I don't think I want to not take opportunities here. So, like, this is my opponent's chance to, like, potentially play a card with protection and, like, force me to two-for-one myself. So I probably lose four cards from my hand here, uh, is my guess. The Force of Negation, pitching this. I'm going to get, like, Red Blasted or Forced or something. Force of Negation, I think pitching Lorien revealed. And if my opponent's last card is a Red Blast, like, they got me. Holy shit. Alright, lucky. So we both hemorrhaged resources. I am not happy to see scroll rack. But I stuck this card, which is a really big deal. Hydroblast, yes. Uh, so I'm not going to cast scroll rack. I would prefer to brainstorm that card away. Uh, yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't stop that. Yep. Oh, and there's something else. Let's have Jace. Yeah, and because I'm not a Pyroblast deck, I don't get to just cleanly answer that. I have to kill it in combat, uh, which is going to be very difficult. All right, Brainstorm lets me get rid of these bad cards, hopefully. Kind of. Gorak doesn't draw the card. I think I'm shuffling both of those away, unless my next card is just absolutely crazy. No. Shuffle. It's not what I'm looking for. I think I'm dead. I think Jace just buries me. Like, this is the opportunity cost of having a bunch of, like, scroll racks and land taxes in my deck. I don't have answers to everything. Like, I have one Prismatic Ending, which I can't cast at a high enough number. I have no Pyroblasts. Uh, scroll racks back. So I can cast this, or I can try to do some scroll rack nonsense. I'll try to do some scroll rack nonsense. Well, it was good enough for a force. So I was going to be playing towards Scroll Rack, put Triumph on top at some point, like Brainstorm into it, do it end of turn to kill the Jace. Um, yeah, but this is just going to run away with the game. The prismatic ending for the Narset before I got that other card was devastating. So now I can never Miracle a Triumph, and my counter spells are off. Jace is going wild. Yeah, I can't Miracle that either. Concede. I, like... I, I think the writing is on the wall here. 
GG's. Rough. So that one went about like I thought it was going to go conceptually in my head. So, like, let's... Round three. I guess we can think about that. Like, round three, we assembled scroll rack plus land tax, and we just, like, lost anyway. It's so much of a resource investment for something that doesn't win you the game. Like, there's so many slots in this deck dedicated to this scroll rack land tax package, and most of the time when I drew one of those cards, they were just, like, dead cards in my deck that weren't removal or counter spells, other interactions... Um, Mox Diamond was largely a liability in this league. And I, I think conceptually, when you, th when you think about a control deck, a control deck is supposed to be like very well tuned to the current meta, right? Like that's, that's a control deck's job is like react to the things that you're supposed to react to. And when I think about most of the things that are in this deck list, like these cards aren't reacting to the things that I am supposed to react to, which is a control deck's primary job. And so, like, the cost of trying to be cute and do land tax scroll rack is me not having, like, four force of wills, three force of negations, maybe another land drop or another Lorien revealed and, like, two more win conditions like Murktide regions or something like that. I really missed red in this league in that last round. Um, being a blue-white control deck and, like, really trying to utilize back to basics is something that I am on board with. But I, I think we need more ways to win the game. You know, we need you know, a small Stoneforge Mystic package. We need a couple of Murktide regents or something. It probably shouldn't be in treat. So conceptually, I, I think this is trying to like relive the glory days. But like when you think about like when was land tax and scroll rack actually viable, like that predates what we think of as like the primary miracles era of magic, like that this stuff would have been considered cute for the most part back then rather than optimal and things like being on the draw and days make land tax on its own just worse and conceptually a control deck wants to hit all of its land drops and if i intentionally skip a land drop to land tax then i'm kind of falling behind to draw three cards that aren't interaction so I, I think conceptually the deck was kind of doomed from the, the start, but uh, I hope it was enjoyable to watch anyway. I am mentally exhausted after recording that one. I'm going to go get myself some dinner. Folks, if you decide that you're a crazy person and you want to scroll rack land tax, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your order. I'm going to go eat something delicious. Have a great rest of the day. See ya.